Hayu Normal and Low Freshman Students from the BSCMT. Welcome back to our YouTube channel. In today's video, we're going to discuss about the nano world. So sit back, listen, and enjoy learning. outcomes for today's discussion. At the end of the lesson, the student should able to first discuss the development of nanotechnology and its importance to society. Second, explain the use of nanotechnology and lastly, analyze the implications of nanotechnology. So let us present our signal as we discuss a development of nanotechnology and its importance. 10, 9, 8, 7, 6, 5, 4, 3, 2, 1, 0. Let us first watch the simple video clip entitled Exploring the Nano World. A spider also harbors secrets. Spider silk thread is pound for pound stronger than steel, and yet completely elastic. Imagine what we might build if we could produce a synthetic version. The first step is getting a closer look at spider silk. The journey could take us all the way down to what we call the nano world. The silk is a hundred times thinner than a human hair. On it, there's bacteria. Near the bacteria, 10 times smaller, a virus. Inside that, 10 times smaller, three strands of its DNA. And nearing the limit of our most powerful microscopes, single carbon atoms. Four of them are the size of one nanometer. One of the wildest things about the nano world, substances here behave differently than the same material does in our world. To us, gold is golden in color. But nano gold can be any color. It absorbs light and generates heat leading to an idea. Injecting nano-sized gold particles into the bloodstream, which are chemically coated to attach to cancerous cells. An incoming laser beam heats the gold particles, burning the cells. The same breakable stuff found in pencil lead. At the nanoscale, it has mind-boggling strength. With it, we've created the world's thinnest material, graphene, one carbon atom thick. It's harder than diamonds, but nearly as flexible as rubber. Turned into a roll, it's called a carbon nanotube one of the strongest and lightest materials on Earth. Let's begin by knowing nanotechnology a scientific and technological convergence. Innovation and development through scientific endeavors. This is how one could describe the changes that technology has brought to human society for the past centuries. Several milestones of technological advancement were made throughout the years. From the creation of stone tool by Homo habilis, the invention and discoveries 
by Isaac Newton and Galileo Galilei during the time of Renaissance. Through the Industrial Revolution and in the Information Age, where information communication technologies have now dominated several fields and aspects of people's everyday lives. There is no exemption that the Philippines was greatly affected by the rise of ICT during the early 21st century. The Philippines may not be classified as a country that develops this kind of technology, but rather a country that uses technological development or develop in more advanced economic economies. So agricultural sustainability, inefficiency in protecting the environment and failure of controlling population are only a few examples of how the Philippines is still lacking in adapting of technological advancement. However, what seems to be an underdeveloped third world country has not in using ICT in the field of development an eligible workforce for the process of outsourcing business in major cities, integration in electronics, healthcare, communications, and biotechnology. This is all because of the new technological forefront that has been dubbed and new technology, which is the nanotechnology. Nanotechnology deals with the materials and devices that are fabricated with the nanometer scale and the tools and phenomena that are manifested within the scale, according to Enriquez in 1975. With this in mind, what is the Philippines doing with this knowledge of device made out of parts that are too small for the eye to see? A nanometer is a unit of length in the metric system equal to 1 billion of the meter or 10 to 9 meters. It is thorough the width or the width of 3 or 4 atoms, which is the average human hair is about 25,000 nanometer wide. Let's get familiarized with some technical terms about nanotechnology. First is we have the nano machine. It is a tiny machine capable of doing human tasks at nano level. Second, nano robot. It is a tiny machine that performs work like miniature surgeon which is implanted in the body to diagnose or treat disorders. Third, nano medicine. is a field of science which deals with the using of nanotechnology in the field of medicine. And lastly, Nanotronics is a field of science in electronics that uses nanotechnology. Now, let us trace back the history of nanotechnology. Nanotechnology started with Richard Feynman. There is plenty of room in the button, lecture in 1959. He basically stated that there will become or there will come a day that there are still plenty to discover and create in that this in microscopic level with atoms and molecules. The next advancement in the field of nanotechnology is the first roadmap of the semiconductor industry proposed by Gordon Moore, who is one of the founders of the Intel Corporation. The roadmap predicted the further shrinking and diminishing of the size of the integrated circuits as time progressed in the following decades. Also, around that time in 1965, a new type of microscopy was discovered. The scanned probe microscope or SPM was strong enough to see and feel actual atoms. Finally, scientists had an extension of their hard or hand shrinking down and able to manipulate objects down to the microscopic level. One of the most interesting discoveries was the construction of nanostructures, fullerness, according to Smalley in 20, uh, 2003 and nanotubes in Colleen and in Voris in 2000 
and got him in game and Nokisa Log in 2007, which are new forms of carbon that exhibited unique properties which was useful for building and constructing electronic or electrical materials. All this advancement in the field of nanotechnology has stirred up business investment, multi-billion dollar in initiatives, and research and development upgrades all throughout the world. Now let's proceed to the application of nanotechnology in the Philippine environment. The Philippines ranked 39th out of 199 countries in terms of carbon dioxide and nitrogen dioxide emission, and it is increasing more and more every year. According to research, the Metro Manila pollution is caused by two things. First and foremost is the exhaust from motor vehicles. Second is the exhaust from factories and even first class hotel in Metro Manila. We still use leaded gasoline which has been bought in advanced countries and said to say, it is a very common sight to see cars and trucks that are obviously violating the anti-pollution laws but seldom do we see their drivers apprehended by the police. There are also factories that spew out not only take black smoke but that dump chemical into our creeks and river but that to continues unabated every morning we take a walk and it is obvious that many of the hotels burn in their garbage on their top floors this is stated by roses in 2002 there is an evident threat brought about by pollution in metro manila and nanotechnology proposes a way wherein it can help the environment. In the year 2000, or in the year 2000, commercial application of nanotechnology began to increase, such the use of silver nanotechnology or particles as an antibacterial agent, nanoparticles based cosmetic in transparent sanskrit, as well as carbon nanotubes clothing material which are effective as stain resistant textile let's also have the other applications of nanotechnology first is you have the nanomedicine is an application of nanotechnology in the field of medicine which deals with the creating tiny machines to help prevent and treat diseases of the human body. These tiny machines include activity, monitor, chemotherapy, pacemaker, biochips, OTC test, insulin pumps, nebulizer, needless injectors, hearing aids, medical flow sensor, and blood pressure as well as glucose monitoring and drug delivery system some of the examples of medical procedures currently being developed using nanomedicine includes the following first diagnostic of nano machines in the form of nano robots are equipped with wireless transmitters could travel around the blood and lymph system and can send warnings when chemical imbalances are detected Second, nanomachines could be planted in the nervous system to monitor pulse, brainwave activity, and other functions. Third, nanotechnology device could help despise or dispense drugs or hormones as needed by the patient. Fourth, nanorobots that act like miniature surgeon can help repair damaged cell or get inside the cell to remove and replace or as assistant damage intracellular structure they can be assigned or designed in replicating themselves to help correct genetic deficiency by altering or replacing dna or deoxyribonucleic acid molecules and can be used to remove blockage in the 
arteries. According to Fretes in 2016, the fifth one, establish and near future nanomedicine application include activity, monitoring, chemotherapy, pacemaker, biochips, OTC test, insulin pumps, nebulizer, needleless injectors, hearing aids, medical flow sensor, and bloody pressure, glucose monitoring, and drug delivery system. 6. Nanomedicine is also capable of using nanoparticles to deliver precise to the right place and correct dosage in the body such as drugs, heat, light, or other substances to specify or a specific type of cell such as cancer cells that help reduce damage to healthy cell compared to traditional chemotherapy employed in the body. Another is in the field of electronics. Nanoelectronics is the application of nanotechnology to help develop electronics devices to nanoscale and be able to reduce their weight and power consumption. Improve the space screen on electronic device to increasing the density of memory chips. Nanotechnology has also reduced size of transistor used in integrated circuits of silicon chips to bring out powerful devices in the palm of your hand with less emitting heat but less energy consumption. Nuclear Research Center and the University of Cambridge or UK are trying to develop mobile devices to be bent, stretched, and folded. Concerning the environment, nanotechnology is being used to solve pollution problems. First, solutions are in the form of producing iron nanoparticles that help facilitate the decomposition of organic solvent disposed in water. This method is found to be significantly lesser in cost compared to traditional water treatment process. Another, nanoparticle that is being developed is the use of silver nanocluster that acts as catalysts that help generate less polluting byproducts in the manufacture of propylene oxide, a raw material for producing plastic, paints, and detergents. Second, the use of nanotubes mixed with epoxy in found to produce windmill blades with lesser weight but stronger blades that helps generate greater electricity output. Third, solar cell costs are effective nanomaterials to generate electricity at a competitive cost as compared to the coal or oil. Have some application of nanotechnology in consumer products. Nanotechnology is already into consumer products used every day like cloth and cosmetic products. Some examples include the following. First, silver nanoparticles embedded in fabric help destroy other causing bacteria. Second, skincare products that contain nanoparticles can easily penetrate skin pore to facilitate absorption of vitamins into the skin. Third, lithium-ion battery that use nanoparticle-based electro or electrodes help in powering plug in electric cores. Fourth, flame retardant used in coating and foam used in furniture are using carbon nanofibers. Fifth, Fabric are made dirt and stain repellent by producing nanofibers which are hydrophobic or hydrophobic. 6. Cutting tools made by nanocrystalline materials of stangen, carbide, tantalum carbide, and titanium carbide can last long or longer than the traditional materials. Of 
sports so also have nanotechnology applications in the field of sports sporting goods have been improved by nanotechnology nanotechnology application in the field of sports are the following first adding nanotubes to the tennis racket frame help increase its strength and provide increased control and power when you hit the tennis ball second nanoparticles in goal clubs shaft materials improve the quality of the materials that mix up the shaft thus creating an improved shaft swing third nanoparticles in tennis ball or balls helps reduce air links that help keep their balls bouncing or bounce longer and lastly carbon nanotubes are used now in a making or in making bicycle components and in the manufacture of lightweight boots we are down to the last part of our discussion which is the impact of nanotechnology the wide use of nanotechnology brings about positive and negative impact on the following first we have health nanoparticles are so tiny and invisible to the naked eye they can come into our body through the skin nose lungs and digestive system they can cause damage our cells if these particles enter our blood vessel they can flow and damage our brain or our central control system second is the national security nanobomb containing self-multiplying deadly virus can be used as terror weapon that are capable of an inhaling thousands to billions of the earth's population nanobots or nano robots can be made into self-replicating -replic machine that may go out of control and have the ability to consume all living matters on earth they are also called as gray go or gray go third is the social interaction because of the speed in communication many false news can be spread easily and can cause many chaos and misunderstanding fourth is culture bestow traditional practices may be refused by the millennials as they marvel at the speed of modern technology compared to the old activities of slow versus the fast pace of nanotechnology Fifth is our economy. Investment in developing nano machines to create nano robots, nano medicine, and the like involves huge cash out or outputs. Nanotechnology is believed to take 20 to 50 years to become fully commercialized, but the next industrial revolution may completely change human way of life. Nanotechnology will impose new jobs for society. This is due to the apparent increase in demand for knowledge that concerns skills and tools in developing nanotechnology itself. Food, hygiene, products, clothes, and other will be processed and packaged differently. The way producers and retailers will market these products will also cause a paradigm shift in the eyes of the customers. And lastly, we have politics while nanotechnology is a work of human hands its use must be regulated and used in modernization or in moderation for instance the use of synthetic drugs and high-powered weapons appropriate law must be enacted manipulating human and destroying our environment and of course we also have our environment Nanotechnology can improve the environment by making solar energy more affordable through the more efficient use of silicon-based solar cells, nanoparticles, and ultra-thin films. Also, agricultural benefits come through the aid of drug fertilizer delivery systems. To 
to fully understand the lesson, let us watch this nanotechnology as a new fronters. The world is shrinking. There's a deep and relatively unexplored world beyond what the human eye can see. The microscopic world is truly alien and truly fascinating. I'm delving further than the microscopic scale. I'm going to explore the potentials of working at a nanoscopic level, working at a level a billion times smaller than the average scale we work at today. This is nanotechnology. Nanotechnology means any technology on a nanoscale that has applications in the real world. Nanotechnology is the science of building small, and I mean really, really small. It's pretty difficult to imagine how small a nanometer is, but let's just take a moment to try and wrap our heads around it. The tip of a pen is around a million nanometers wide, so nowhere near close. A single sheet of paper is around 75,000 nanometers thick. A human hair is around 50,000 nanometers thick. And I ran out of things to compare. Let's just take a different approach. If a nanometer was the size of a football, the coronavirus would be the size of an adult male. A donut would be the size of New Zealand, and a chicken would be the size of the Earth. In fact, on a comparative scale, if each person on Earth was the size of a nanometer, every single person on the planet would fit into a single car. A Hot Wheels car. You get the idea, nano is super, super tiny. We're talking subatomic. So that's how big, or rather small, a nanometer is. But why does it matter? Why look at really small things? Well, they ultimately teach us about the universe that we live in, and we can do really interesting things with them. When we move into the nanoscale, we can work with new domains in physics that don't really apply at any other scale. Nanoscience and nanotechnology can be used to reshape the world around us. Literally. Everything on Earth is made up of atoms. The food we eat, the clothes we wear, the buildings and houses we live in, our own bodies. Now, think for a moment about how a car works. It's not only about having all the right parts, they also need to be in the right place in order for the car to work properly. This seems obvious, right? Well, in pretty much the same way, how the different atoms in something are arranged determines what pretty much anything around you does. With nanotechnology, it's possible to manipulate and take advantage of this, much like arranging Lego blocks to create a model building, or airplane, or spaceship. But there's a catch, and here's where things start to really get interesting. The properties of things also change when they're made smaller. Phenomena based on quantum effects, the strange and sometimes counterintuitive behavior of atoms and subatomic particles, occur naturally when matter is manipulated and organized at the nanoscale. These so-called quantum effects dictate the behavior and properties of particles. So we know that the properties of materials are size-dependent when working at the nanoscale. This means that scientists have the power to adjust and fine-tune material properties, and they've actually been able to do this for some time now. It's possible to change properties such as melting point, fluorescence, electrical conductivity, magnetic permeability, and chemical reactivity, to just name a few. But where can we actually see the results of this kind of work? Well, everywhere. There are numerous commercial products already on the market that you and I use daily that wouldn't exist in the same way without having been manipulated and modified using nanotechnology. Some examples include clear nanoscale films on glasses and other surfaces to make them water resistant, scratch resistant, or anti-reflective. Cars, trucks, airplanes, boats, and spacecraft can be made out of increasingly lightweight materials. We're shrinking the size of computer chips, in turn helping to enlarge memory capacity. We're making our smartphones even smarter, with features like nano generators to charge our phones while we walk. We're enabling the delivery and release of drugs to an exact location within the body with precise timing, making treatments more effective than ever before. There's quite the list, and that's only a few of the potential applications. Let's delve into a few of these in more detail. Nanotechnology has been pivotal in advancing computing and electronics, leading to faster, smaller, smarter, and more portable systems and products. It is now considered completely normal for a computer to be carried with one hand, while just 40 years ago, a computer, infinitely slower, was the size of a room. This has been made possible through the miniaturization of the world of microprocessors. For example, transistors, the switches that enable all modern computing, have reduced drastically in the briefest amount of time from roughly 250 nanometers in size in the year 2000 to just a single nanometer in 2016. This revolution in transistor size may soon enable the memory for an entire computer to be stored on a single tiny chip. Increasingly faster systems have also been made possible using nanoscale magnetic tunnel junctions that can quickly and effectively save data during a system shutdown. It's expected that using magnetic RAM, or random access memory, with these nanoscale junctions, computers will soon be able to boot almost instantly. Flexible, bendable, foldable, and stretchable electronics have been developed using semiconductor nanomembranes. 
they're monocrystalline structures with thicknesses of less than a few hundred nanometers. In normal terms, they're really small and super bendy. They're particularly useful for applications in smartphones and wearable technology, like smartwatches. Nanotechnology is a definite answer to a digital world that is focused on becoming smaller and more efficient, but it can also help us start to clean up some of the world's bigger and more pressing problems. There are many applications for detecting and cleaning up environmental contaminants. It is anticipated that nanotechnology could contribute significantly to environmental and climate protection by saving raw materials, energy and water, and reducing greenhouse gases and hazardous wastes. From increasing the durability of materials so that they last longer and reduce waste, to the creation of insulation materials that improve the efficiency of paper towels, allowing them to absorb 20 times its own weight, nanotechnology really has the potential to do great things for the conservation of our planet and the human race. The availability of fresh, clean drinking water is an increasingly pressing issue that can be linked back to population growth, urban mitigation, pollution, and the vast effects of events associated with climate change. Nanotechnology holds the power and promise to not only detect pollutants, but to filtrate and purify. The magnetic interactions between ultra-small specks of dust can remove arsenic. This is incredible, given that it is naturally present at high levels in the groundwater in a number of countries. Similarly, the development of nanoparticles that can purify water pollutants, which cost less than the process of pumping it out of the ground for treatment, also holds a great promise. Basically, getting clean water is a huge problem, and nanotechnology can help solve it. This all sounds almost too good to be true. There have to be downsides to the seemingly endless potential of nanotechnology for the environment. Actually quantifying and confirming the effects of a product on the environment, both positive and negative, is achieved by examining the entire life cycle, from production of the raw material to disposal at the end of its life cycle. There is a genuine concern that nanotechnology will further increase energy and environmental costs, given that the production of the nanomaterials themselves takes a large amount of energy, water, and environmentally problematic chemicals such as solvents. In order to produce things that will help the environment, we have to use things that will harm the environment. Scientists are on the verge of new frontiers all the time. Nanotechnology is an act of exploration, and we're very much still in the early stages, but we're closer than you might think to this actual goal. The idea of subatomic disease fighting machines have been in science fiction for decades, so this idea is not really a new one, but we've definitely come a lot closer to making this idea a reality in the past decade. It sounds like a near perfect solution to many modern medical problems. But let's just explore how and where science fiction meets fact, and what challenges may lie ahead. Nanotechnology is already heavily incorporated into medical tools, knowledge, and therapies already widely in use. Nanomedicine is the application of nanotechnology in medicine. It's used for disease prevention, diagnosis, and treatment. Nanoparticles can encapsulate or otherwise help to deliver medication directly to cancer cells and minimize the risk of damage to healthy tissue. This could ultimately change the way cancer is currently treated and dramatically reduce the toxic effects of chemotherapy. Suffice to say, researchers are working on it. The increased capabilities of imaging and diagnostic tools enabled by nanotechnology are also paving the way for increased success rates for many different therapies. Quantum dots are tiny semiconductor particles just a few nanometers in size, sometimes referred to as artificial atoms due to their ability to behave like naturally occurring atoms or molecules. Because of those quantum phenomena I mentioned earlier, Quantum dots have optical and electric properties that differ from larger particles. As a result, they have many applications and are widely used in various sectors. However, creating quantum dots is an extremely expensive process which generates a huge amount of waste, and we find ourselves revisiting those environmental concerns. Amazingly though, scientists have recently developed a low-cost method to make these quantum dots using some chemicals and green leaf extracts, tea leaves. The procedure is economical and the byproducts are non-toxic. The results are genuinely amazing with heaps of potential. The research proved that the quantum dots created with tea leaves can penetrate the skin and reduce the growth of cancer cells by about 80%. So not a cure, but a huge leap forward in progress that doesn't come with the environmental payoff. It's not just how we face the big diseases that nanomedicine can transform. Researchers are now exploring ways to grow complex tissues with the goal of one day growing human organs for transplant. Nanotechnology can also improve the way vaccines are delivered and how successful they are, including vaccine delivery without the use of needles. Still a work in progress, though an amazing feat once achieved. But the emerging era in nanomedicine really is the era of the nanobot. Nanorobots are building tiny packages that can complete tasks in an automated way. They hold the ability to sense, respond, detect friend or foe within the body, and deliver payloads and cargo, all at the nanoscale. Why do we need them? Well, conventional water-soluble drugs are far from perfect, and present difficulties in treatment. 
However, diagnostic nanomachines allow doctors to monitor the internal chemistry of the body's organs, providing direct access to diseased areas. Nanobots can also be equipped with wireless transmitters, so that doctors can change the treatment method to respond specifically to the state of the medical condition. They also hold the potential to completely replace pacemakers by treating the heart's cell directly. Research regarding nanobots in medicine offers several opportunities such as artificial antibodies, artificial white and red blood cells, and antiviral nanobots. They are super durable and could theoretically operate for years without any damage. Nanobots in fact hold the potential to address many health problems besides cancer, such as unblocking blood vessels in hard to reach areas, taking biopsies, or measuring the level of certain chemicals in otherwise inaccessible areas of the body. So we are much, much closer than you might have thought, and the field of medical nanorobotics holds considerable promise for advancing medical progress. But the phrase, so close yet so far, comes to mind, because there are many challenges and roadblocks to face before surgical nanobots will reach clinical trials. A few months ago, I made a video on Neuralink, and they're facing the same exact issues we mentioned here. Scientists have numerous challenges to overcome before the potential of nanobots in medicine can truly be realized. Getting the bots to travel safely where we want them to in the body and actually having them stay there long enough to carry out a procedure is incredibly difficult. Scientists also have yet to work out how to keep the nanobots from being destroyed and expelled from the body like any other toxic or foreign bodies. So while nanobots hold the key to an infinitely less toxic solution to treating cancer, the challenges in getting the solution to the stage of becoming a viable treatment are still a bit in the future. We're not quite there yet. However, if past progress is anything to go by, I don't think we're so far off. Nanotechnology sounds like a solid solution to many modern medical and technological issues. It makes you wonder how prominent they'll be in daily life in the future. If you're interested in nanotechnology and want to learn more about it, Brilliant has exactly what you're looking for. Brilliant is the best place to go to learn about everything math, science, and computer science related. It's extremely interactive, with each course either having code to write, puzzles to solve, or some other challenge to overcome. They're constantly adding new courses and finding new ways to challenge your brain. For example, they have a course on computational biology. There's actually a quiz that talks about Richard Feynman and his argument for nanotechnology, as well as some of the limits that you run into. The RNA enzymes they discuss essentially function as nanomachines at that scale. Brilliant has courses that cover almost any science-related interest you have. It's definitely worth looking into. They show you what you're learning and provide visual examples to solidify your understanding. I find this a lot easier than learning through actual books or videos on YouTube, as each course is tailored to making things simple to understand. With over 60 courses and new ones being added constantly, you are guaranteed to learn something new. If this sounds fun and you're interested, head to brilliant.org slash aperture for a free trial. The first 200 of you- And now, this is the end of our discussion, but let me leave you with this quotation. Nanotechnology, the science of building machines at a subatomic level, one of the most powerful engines of invention. It develops breakthrough solutions to long-standing real-world problems. And these are the references that I may use for this topic. Thank you for learning with me today. But please, don't forget to click the like button and subscribe. See you on my next discussion. Goodbye!